So today, we've been talking all this month about prosperity in our year of abundance. We talked about an abundance of joy, an abundance of love. But don't forget, we also need, as we live on planet Earth, an abundance of the stuff that it takes to live in human society, meaning often money to buy the things that we need. And we are spiritual and human beings. There is no shame in that. And there is a lot of fear around that for many, many reasons. And so this month, we're talking about that prosperity. And the first week, we talked about what prosperity is. Because yes, it is money. Because money is an energy that you use to buy other energetic things that you need. Right? Money is nothing in itself. Everything that exists in the universe was once an idea was once an energy, and then it came into form, and every form goes back into energy. That's what money does. That's what we do. That's what the earth does. It creates form, and then that form dies and goes back into energy to create more form on the earth. This is a law of the universe, y'all, just like gravity. Everything that's born dies. Can you believe that every time something dies, something is born? I believe that with all my heart. So that is prosperity. That's being in the flow of prosperity. So last week we talked about giving. Giving in order to sort of prime the pump of our prosperity because when we hold our fists tight in fear, we cannot receive. We cannot receive. We must open. And what I have learned, I don't say a lot of things up here that are like, this is the truth. There are a few things I say. I say love is the truth, no matter what. And I will say, this is my truth, that from the moment I opened myself to give beyond the point that I felt comfortable with, I began my life of feeling comfortable and losing my fear of economic insecurity. Don't ask me how it works, I just know that it does. I just know that it does. I have the lived experience of this. And I also, I mean, I wrote that song. <laughs> um, and it was, it's my lived experience that for so long I focused on, this is what I need. I've got to have it. How can I give it? How, how can I get it? How can I manipulate it? How can I fight for it? How can I work for it? How can I punch through? How can I get somebody to notice that I'm doing it so I can get something back for it? And at one point, I just went... I surrender. Nothing is working. Nothing is working. I surrender. Whatever. I mean, it wasn't even a graceful surrender like, I think I'll surrender and allow grace to come in. It was just like, okay, nothing works, nothing works, whatever. And the moment I had that little opening, I am opening, I am opening, I am opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one. The moment I surrendered, I got enough of an opening for some light to shine through. And this is how it works. Rumi said, the wound is where the light gets in. Leonard Cohen said, there's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. So our woundedness works for us. Our fears can work for us. Because when we face them and consciously open, we find something different from our fear. When we run from our fear, when we hide from our fear, when we try not to think about our fear, when we focus somewhere else all the time, then our fear can catch up with us. And we may never face it. It may just follow us around our whole lives causing anxiety at all times and making us feel like we don't have enough no matter how much we have. Know any billionaires who seem to want more and more and more and more and more? Because when when the money is the goal, there's never enough. But when you understand that you are cared for in a universe that was created in love, that is love, in action, in expression, in form, then enough is always enough. And if there's more, that's awesome. And if there's not, there's the expectation of more. The expectation that I'm going to be fine because my source is not this or that. It's not my 401k. It's not the government. It's not my job. 
My source of good is my very own soul and its connection to all that is. The divine oneness, that love, that is the energy that undergirds the entire universe. I believe that. And so we give from that place. And then there are a hundred ways, at least, our good comes to us, at least. So today we're talking about being a good receiver. We talked about giving. That's a challenge. How many of you think it might be a challenge to receive? Anybody? Yeah. I realize that if the universe flows in this way and I'm not receiving, Who's the common denominator here? <laughs> yeah. What am I doing to block my ability to receive? One of the things I do to block my ability to receive is I need it my own way. And so I keep looking for it to look exactly like that. And if it's not that, I don't want it. Don't, 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 don't. And I end up at the bus stop waiting to get to Galveston while somebody is flapping tickets to Hawaii in my face because I'm going to the ocean and I've decided it's Galveston because that's all I can afford. It's the only way I can get there and I'm going to take the bus. That's a metaphor, y'all. <sighs> that's a metaphor, but how many times have you done that in your life? Nope, 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 nope. How many times have you loved someone so much who was treating you poorly and you stuck around anyway and ignored the people in your life who were trying to give you love? I've done it too many times to count. So we're out of practice in receiving in some ways. Sometimes we're really good at receiving certain things, but not so much others. How many, if somebody offers you money, do you say thank you and just take it? Probably, maybe, especially if it's in the form of a paycheck or you feel like you deserve it. What if you feel like you don't deserve it? What if somebody just came up to you and just handed you some money and said, here, this is for you? What would be your reaction? Wait a minute. I, I didn't do anything to deserve, perhaps. Maybe your reaction is awesome, bring it on. But if there's any little bit of, I don't deserve that, think about how you carry the I don't deserve that through your daily life and miss so many gifts that are there for you. Not necessarily materially, but yes, materially, and in love and in friendship and in beauty in appreciation for life. So we begin to notice ourselves and how we receive and how we don't receive. And one of the things that I think we're afraid of is we're all afraid of being takers. Because we've all had people in our life that we give and give and give and they never say thank you and it's never enough. And I never want to look like one of those people. I don't want people to talk about me the way we talk about that guy that we keep giving to. So here's the thing, you're probably not a taker. If you are, you won't recognize yourself anyway. But if you are a receiver, you receive with gratitude and with grace and without insistence on it looking a certain way. Yeah, I know you gave me $10, but I really need 15. Eh, that's kind of a taker. <laughs> yeah. So takers are not grateful. Takers are barely even aware. Takers have a sense of entitlement. And they are blocking themselves from, themselves from much good. So if you have a sense of entitlement, work on that. And work on your sense of absolute knowing that you deserve anything that anybody in this whole universe deserves. Because you are love. That's different. It's different from being entitled. It's just a knowing that there is good coming at me at all times, and I better pay attention. I better pay attention because that's one of our roadblocks. We're just not paying attention. We're so busy watching the news and freaking ourselves out and giving us health problems, worrying about something that we literally can do very little about, that we miss the sunshine, we miss the flowers, we miss the people who have come to us to grace us with their good. We miss the opportunity to listen to someone, which is an honor. 
We miss the opportunity to speak from our hearts to someone, which is also an honor. Those are gifts given that we often forget to receive. Have you ever been walking with somebody and you're, and, and you're like, they're talking and you've got your own thoughts and you're sort of doing your own thing and then suddenly you go, oh, this isn't just small talk. They're, I can tell by the tone that they're talking about something really important. What is it? I wasn't listening. There, you may miss out on your moment. You may miss out on your moment, or you may <laughs> figure out from context. <laughs> but being open, paying attention, we don't pay attention. So much of the time, I'm gonna hit you with this quote again. Attention is the stuff memory is made of, and memory is accumulated genius. I have no idea who wrote that, but my fifth grade English teacher made me write it a thousand times for talking in the hall. Yeah. I will never forget that quote. So, are we deserving? Yeah, a lot of us say, yes, I deserve it. I work hard. And you know what? I have a lot of good in my life. I have unimaginable good in my life. I have a life that I would never have even aspired to as a younger person. I wanted enough. That's all I ever wanted was enough. It's all I ever felt I deserved was enough. And now I have so much more than enough, and I give, and I give, and I still have so much more than enough. <coughs> and I work hard. Most of my life, I've worked three or four jobs, because when you're a musician, that's what you have to do. <laughs> or five or six or eight. <laughs> But I also recognize that there are people in this world who work way harder than I do for way longer and in really horrible conditions and they will never have what I have. So I can either let that open my heart so that I can be even more generous and pay attention to the ways that I can be there for others or I can let it make me feel guilty and start shutting down so that I refuse to, see, to receive my good. Hard work, yes, and we all deserve good. So we seek out the ways that we can give it, we seek out the ways that we can receive it. So we start to say yes, yes to the people in our lives. Because unless we're getting, unless we, there are a clear no, if you get a clear no, you can, you cannot have a person in your life and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. People come into our lives for a time and sometimes they serve their purpose in our lives or we serve our purpose in theirs. And then it's time. It's just time for them to be somewhere else doing something else. Some people take advantage of us and it's time as the Dalai Lama says, not just for me to quit being taken advantage of, but for me to relieve you of the burden on your soul of taking advantage of someone over and over, which is not good for you. So we don't have to hold on to everything. And when we stop, stop holding on to everything because we're afraid nothing good will happen after this one good thing, then we are open to all the good things that happen. We circulate spiritual and physical health. We circulate good. So we breathe and we say yes. We say no when it's no, and then, the re and then we say yes. How many times have you gotten up and said no to the weather? <laughs> no, nuh -uh. nope, not doing this. It's freezing again, nope, nope, that's not why I live in Texas, nope, nope, nope. And I can tell you, if you're dedicated enough to it, you can live a whole no day. Because when you close yourself off from some things, when you refuse to be in acceptance of what is, it's hard to pick and choose what things you are being not in acceptance of. And so you say, yes, it is freezing again. And that's a great opportunity for me to drink hot cocoa or sit in front of my fire, or I have to go to work, but I will bundle up accordingly. Whatever. I'm just making stuff up, y'all know. I'm just making stuff up. But say yes. Say yes. Say yes to whatever is in your life and then find where the yes is. That's prosperity, my friend. That's prosperity. Where is the yes? 
Erin used to have this friend that would come over and, and play with her, and I adored this kid because while Erin, my beloved daughter who's back there working our sound and uh, video, um, would say, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, and if my answer was no, it was like just work harder at wanting to do this. And her friend, Emma, would say, oh, then we can do this other thing. Let's go. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, I want to be this nine-year-old when I grow up. Because there is always a yes somewhere. And if we spend our time staring at the no, we miss all the yeses. We miss all the yeses. Only you know what your yeses are. Okay, how many of you are great at receiving compliments? Yeah. <laughs> Wow, you look so good today. Oh, no, this thing, I just threw it on at the last minute. I really like your hair. Oh, I haven't washed it in two days. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Do you argue with people who compliment you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stop doing that. That is a simple way to start practicing accepting good in your life. They are giving you a gift. They're giving you the gift of seeing you through their eyes. And it doesn't matter whether you agree with how they see you. They are giving you a gift. And the only appropriate answer to a gift is thank you. Thank you. And then breathe. I recommend that you do this as a practice. When someone says something good to you, say thank you and then... Breathe in, like, oh, okay, maybe this really is me. Perhaps I don't see myself that clearly all the time. Is that even a possibility? Yeah, yeah. So accept compliments. How many times do you say no to offers of help? Can I help you? No, 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 I got it. I don't want to be a bother. I don't want anybody to, no, 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 I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> Nancy's over here going... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure her family is pinching her as they sit next to her. Yeah, a lot of us do that. No, 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 I got it. I got it. And I, I, that, was, that has been my uh, emblem for a long time. I got it. I got it. I can do it. And you know what? You can't do it all. You can't. So, and even if you could, you can do it and hurt yourself, or you can do it and not be totally exhausted and let somebody else help. So I just suggest that even if you know how to do it better yourself, this is a practice that I really work at. I'm not saying I'm good at it. I'm saying I work at it. When someone offers you help, take a moment. Don't automatically say no. Take a moment and breathe and think how they could be of help. And if they can, say, you know what? You could do this. You could do this. That would be so helpful. Thank you. And then you are giving them a gift. You're giving them the gift of feeling helpful and useful and purposeful. You're helping them live in a yes world rather than a no world. See how this all fits together? How this all fits together? So we accept offers of help. And we stop telling the stories that we've been telling ourselves for so long, we assume they're truth, but they might not be. Like the story of, I'll do it better myself. Maybe. In some cases, I have allowed someone to do it for me and found that I wanted to redo it. In which case, I let myself do that. But more and more, I go, you know what? That's probably good enough. There are ways and times in my life where it is important and worthwhile to work for excellence. And then there are other times where, what does it really matter? Amen. What does it really matter? And so I say yes to good enough. Perfect is the enemy of excellent. And excellent is the enemy of good. You know, there are times to strive for excellence, and I do. I don't need to strive for excellence necessarily when I am doing menial tasks. So um, make room in your life. Make room in your life. One way is to say yes. One way is to pay attention because your good is coming to you in a hundred ways. One of the tools we use in New Thought is affirmation because we tend to believe the bad stuff. Why is it that you have voices in your head Years and years and years of family, friends, people that you've worked with, 
and they have said a million things to you, some of them good, some of them bad, why is it that you only hear the bad voices? Yes, I've been in your head, I know. Why is it that you hear the voice that says, no, nope, that wasn't good enough, no, oh, no, no, no. If you don't hear only or mostly that voice, congratulations, you've done your work. There's more work to do. If you do hear that voice, use affirmation. Use your own words. There are at least 100 ways my good is coming to me today. Before I get out of bed, I claim a blessing. And then when we claim a blessing, does that mean that we work magic and blessings come down because we cast a magic spell? It, no, it means that when we claim a blessing, then we notice the blessing when it comes. Yeah, maybe it would have come anyway, but would we have been present for it? Often not. Often we have to get hit pretty hard over the head to recognize good things that happen to us. And I wonder how many hundred or thousand opportunities for good we miss each day because we're just not paying attention or we're so involved in, oh, I'm just not doing it good enough. It's just not good enough. It's just not good enough. I'm just not enough. Maybe you feel that strongly and deeply, or maybe you only feel that at certain times when you get frustrated. But if that's in there, I urge you to use affirmation, to say, I am enough. There are a hundred ways my good is coming to me. I am opening in sweet surrender. I am opening to good. I am opening to love. I am opening to God. I am opening to spirit. I am opening to every beautiful thing. And then don't expect that there won't be other things too. There will be things that aren't beautiful. But when you're open to the beauty, you will have banked enough good in yourself that you handle the difficulties better. We tend to think that if I rehearse the catastrophe, <laughs> when it comes, I'll be better prepared. No, it just means we experience catastrophe when there's not catastrophe. And we experience catastrophe when there is catastrophe. What about if we use our time instead of trying to rehearse catastrophe, rehearse beauty, rehearse love, rehearse friendship, rehearse connection, rehearse giving, rehearse receiving, rehearse seeing all the beauty that there is for you. And then when catastrophe comes, you're so much better armed to deal with it. Armed with good, not armed with despair. Arming yourself with despair does not work. Just telling you. I know because I've tried it. And then it comes down to receiving and then appreciating all of what we already have. Because, man, you don't even have to wait for something new to happen. You can start by looking around and going, oh my gosh, look at, look at the wonders. Look at the wonders. One thing I love about my husband, I've shared this before, almost every time we go to the grocery store, he goes, we have all these choices. Think of all the people in the world who don't have these choices. We can literally decide what we want to eat and go pick out what it is that we want and take it home with us. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. And then he picks frosted flakes and SpaghettiOs. <laughs> My good is not necessarily your good. <laughs> so we start to appreciate what we already have. I have a prayer that I pray that says, thank you for every blessing I've noticed. Help me notice the blessings that I haven't. And then you can sit in a chair and have nothing happen to you and still get a blessing. <laughs> And that is my prayer for you. Open and receive the blessings. Thank you.